Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. 1935. I found this newspaper underneath the floorboards of a house and I just wanted to show it to you. It dates back to 1935. And some things have changed since then. Almost 100 years, well, it's 90 odd years. And you can see some of the pages are damaged. Friday, August 1935. Berlin's 150,000 Jews spent a night of terror last night. In this video, I'm going to show you what I've been up to recently. What do we have on the other pages, on the sports pages? Football news. This is probably when Arsenal were a bit different from what they are now. Boxing news. Joe Lewis. I must have a good read of this paper. I've had glimpses now and then, but I, I would like to sit down and read it page to page. It was just insulating. They just had it to keep the place warm at the time. They had it underneath the carpet and they were trying to keep their house warm. So it was a good find for me. Okay, here's me at another site. Checking the belts on a gas booster. Just checking the pressure. So I was on a site where they had loss of heating and hot water services and I was there to carry out some work and here's the boilers had some problems with these boilers because their call for heat on the switch their call for heat on the switch slide wasn't there so I isolated the power on the main isolator and I was carrying out some work have my tools out And I was changing a CO alarm, a faulty CO alarm, which was out of date. The sensor on this is recommended to be changed every three years, but this one has been here since 2018 and it has not been changed. So I've been getting problems with this CO alarm being faulty, sending false alarms. Do you ever put your hand right behind the screwdriver? How do you hold a screwdriver? I remember I was taught. This is how you hold a screwdriver. And when you are tightening stuff up to make sure that you have your, your palm behind the screwdriver to get more force. So this is the model. Citron. Made in Italy. And here, here's the model in situ. With its Wagos and so on. So I'm going to just unscrew it from the panel. Do check the height on your CO alarms. Remember the height on them and the distance from the nearest appliance. This is the wiring going through the panel. Sometimes CO alarms aren't, it's not taken into consideration how high they are from the ground and how close they are to the burning appliance. Those things are important. And making sure that they're not near an opening like ventilation or near a door. So here it, here it is. I decided that I was going to remove the, remove it and use the housing, the old housing, because it already had its pre-drilled hole. So here it is, the other unit. Here's the old unit. And then I've got the new unit in place now. So I used the existing housing, but I took the, the main PCB of the unit out and I'm just putting the screws in. Here it is inside the control panel. And that's the sensor there. It wasn't actually attached when I took it out of the box. I've tightened the screws up. And then I left a note to say the expiry date because for some reason it came with no expiry date on it. So I put an expiry date saying that within three years to replace it. So at this site, I was changing a fan on this unit. It's very important when you're carrying out these works to stay focused on what you're doing. So if you have a work colleague calling you or asking you for anything, phoning you, do not pay attention because you can miss the slightest thing. There's, there's been times when I've not put a burner back in and I'm about to turn it on, but do 
your checks, double check everything. Make sure your washers are new or fit for purpose. Make sure everything's correct. Mark down stuff, take notes, write down what you're changing and so on. And don't be distracted when you carry out your work by anything or anybody. So here I am changing this fan unit. Suspected fan unit needs replacing. And these are the ports. I was also filming this to record the direction of things and, and where things are. So I've isolated the supply and this is inside the unit. It's pretty clean. You can see the direction of the hot surface igniter there. It looks quite good on the inside, but the outside there's a lot of cor corrosion, a lot of water damage. Yeah, so remember to put your burner back in and everything back in because the boiler is not going to remind you. It's not going to tell you, by the way, don't forget to put me back in. So you double check before you turn things on. That burner goes in one way and there's not really any other way that it can go in. So I cleaned up the probes whilst I had it open. The, not the hot surface igniter, but the flame detection. You know how to check these hot surface igniters, don't you? You have to do a resistance check on them, an ohms resistance check. So the new unit has been changed and now I've started to get problems with the PCB. Start, it, it just started flashing like this. There was no problem with it before, but for some reason now, when I've turned the power off and turned the unit back on after safe isolation, I don't know what it's done, but it's may, maybe sent a power surge through the PCB and damaged it. But something was blowing the boards. This has got three boards. It's got a display board. It's got an external connection board. That's on the left-hand side. This is the display board. So, and then on the left over here, you have the external connection board. And then on the right, you also have a, another, you have a control board. So there's three PCBs. And what I believe happened on this, I believe one knocked out the other. At this particular site, the flu was getting changed because there was a hole in it. So I needed to sort the hole out, change the flu. You can have a look here at the condition of the flu, of where it was going in to the heat exchanger. So I was changing the gas valves as well, two gas valves. You may have seen in a previous video of me diagnosing that the resistance on the gas valve was lower than it needed to be. I think it was about 40 ohms of resistance rather than the 45 it should be. It was opening. The gas valves were opening. Here's, look at the holes in these flues. Look how many holes there are. So fortunately, it was changed. Look out for this when you're carrying out servicing. Make sure you don't leave any holes. Don't leave any ID or any at-risk situations if you can help it. I only spotted one initially, but when I pulled the flue out, I realised that there were more. Also, make sure you order up your gaskets when you order flues. Sometimes, in this case, I was sent new seals, but you're not always sent new seals, so... So be prepared. So I'm just carrying out a tightness test here to make sure that the new gas valve has got no leaks on it. So once I was sure that it wasn't, I turned it on, and then I it didn't light up straight away. I was a bit concerned, but... Because I had changed over the other one before and got it to light, I knew that the gas valve possibly needed adjustment. So I adjusted the gas valve. I, I opened it up more and then got the burner to light. On this boiler, I had three, three boilers that were needed diagnosis. So on this particular one here, I saw that the MCB had tripped for some reason. It's annoying when the person doesn't leave notes as to why it's tripped someone had isolated it but they didn't say what had gone on so it's dangerous so i was checking the fuse making sure that the fuse was okay in the boiler one of the boilers the first ones i went to said that the fan was at fault i just took the boiler's word for it the pcb told me that the fan was faulty so i, 
I accepted it and just booked up a new fan. Then the boiler number two now, I'm here just testing my test equipment, making sure that it is working. I think the battery needs changing in my multimeter because I'm not hearing the sound. So I'm going to have to change the batteries for that soon. But I can see the resistance there. And it was, the fuse was flying. So it looks like it's bypassed the fuse and it's tripped the breaker. Something has tripped the main breaker. So I need to find out what that is. I suspect that it's the fan. I did check the fan to see if there was any movement. So I've got my gas supply isolated. I saw there's our isolation. So I saw the PRV dripping as well. So that's going to need replacing. So I've got boiler seven. Let's have a listen to see what happens when I turn the boiler on. I checked to see if there was movement on the fan. And the fan hadn't moved. So I was opening up the supply to this boiler to see what happens. And then the floor returned and it was dripping. Did you hear that noise? Made me jump. So the fan smelt a bit and it sounded like the fan had seized what i did was i disconnected the fan you can do a resistance check on parts so you can do i could have disconnected the fan and then did a resistance on the live neut and the neutral to see what my resistance was and then reconnected the fan and then i would have been able to find out what was going on but i didn't do that i just turned it on I didn't, when I disconnected the leads to the fan, the boiler's power came on and it didn't trip. So the fan needs replacing. Do you see it there? I've disconnected my fan leads. My fan modulation and power leads have been disconnected. And a new PRV is required for this boiler. So I have to isolate this boiler make it safe and book up a fan. I'm also gonna isolate the floor and return. So I was just checking the pump on this particular unit to see if it was running. So I was just using a magnetic tool. This magnetic tool, this magnetic tool isn't a hundred percent reliable, but it can give you an indication and it shows you the rotation as well of the magnetic pull. You can download the free app. I think it's Dag Danfoss Magnetic Tool. So I've got another boiler that's not working now. This one says water pressure. This one's been isolated and another one where no one has written anything about it. They just want you to have to go and diagnose it yourself, even though they already know. So anyways, nonetheless, here I am checking another unit that has been isolated and no notes on it. So I'm going to turn it on. And see what happens, see if I get any leaking, because you don't know what to expect. You can open up the floor and return and you can have a, a flood. So I'm opening everything up slowly. Thankfully, the power supply is on on this one. No PRV leaking. Don't know what to expect, if anything's going to trip. So it came on. Burner lights on. Seems fine. Let's have, a little, let's have a listen to what's going on. So I'm checking the pump now. And I had a magnetic pull on the fans. I had a magnetic pull on the pumps. But funny enough, when I checked the magnetic pull on a boiler that had no problem and this boiler here which seemed to have a problem because this one was overheating it seemed like it was kettling and going to 100 celsius so let's have a look let's look at the temperature 100 celsius on the flow temperature because the pump wasn't circulating properly so there's either a blockage in the heat exchanger or the pump isn't operating properly but remember to carry out your checks do your fags when you're there don't just carry out diagnosis do your fags always be doing your fags check everything you don't know what someone's left behind you're turning a boiler back on so look at absolutely everything signs of 
anything, especially when a body's been isolated and no notes have been left on it, no warning notices. Okay, thank you for joining me. Until next time, bye-bye-bye.